Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. And for this video, we're going to look at muscle at the molecular level. Um, you'll remember inside of the muscle cell, we have these organelles called um, fibrils or myofibrils. And within the myofibrils, we have myofibers. At the molecular level, they look a little something like this. Each one of these zigzag lines here is called a Z line or Z disc, depending on what the textbook says. From one Z disc to the next Z disc is what's called the sarcomere. On the molecular level, the sarcomeres are the functional unit of the muscle. This is what's going to shorten to bring about that contraction of the muscle fiber, contraction of the muscle cell. In each sarcomere, there's two different major proteins involved. First, I'm going to draw the thin filaments, which are made up of a protein called actin. Um, and I'll continue the actin on the other side of the Z line. Sarcomeres don't live alone. They have a sarcomere on either side of them going all the way down the entire muscle fiber. So those are the thin filaments, the actin filaments. And in red, I'm going to do the myosin filaments. And they're these quite thick protein filaments. that are between the actin filaments and they can come up against the actin filaments. In terms of scale, by the way, these sarcomeres are usually wider and I just don't have enough room to really show. So this red stuff again is supposed to be myosin. And there's myosin and these other sar sarcomeres nearby, of course, that are flanking the, the sarcomere that we're looking at. So we have a sarcomere here, we have a sarcomere here, and we have a sarcomere over here. On this molecular level, several things have been named. We've already given you Z disc or Z line on either side, um, and then the actin and the myosin protein. This area here, and if you look at what's in this area, <laughs> it's the middle of the actin filament. Excuse me, it's the middle of the myosin filaments, and there's no actin in this region. This is called the H-band. The next one I'll label is from the end of the myosin to the beginning of the next myosin on the next sarcomere. That one is called the I-band. And then from the end of the myosin, including the myosin, and going over to the other end of the myosin, that's called the A-band. The myosin proteins are actually connected to each other, and I'll, re I'll represent that with dashed lines. And that creates what's called the M-line. That's the M line going up through the myosin.
another type of protein that's in here are elastic proteins coming from the myosin that are kind of springy. They come from the myosin and they connect to the Z-line. And I'll just draw one set of them. Um, those proteins have a special name. They're elastic proteins and they're called titan. So those are all the parts on a molecular level of the muscle fibers. One other thing I wanted to mention at this point is um, the myosin, the actin, the myosin again. This is what makes up the striations in striated muscle. So even under um, low power microscopy, you can actually, you can't make out the individual molecules, but you can see the effect of these molecules. These make up the actin, or excuse me, the myosin filaments make up the dark regions of those striations. And then the area where the Z line is, as I understand it, makes up the lighter parts of those striations. So that's why muscle is striated, because of the arrangement of these molecules. Um, what was noticed, this was discovered using um, electron microscopy, which allows for much, much higher magnification. And what they saw initially on electron microscopy were these lines. And this is where the names came from for the H band, the A band, the I band, the M line, etc. Um, and they were able to isolate muscle that was relaxed and look at it under electron microscopy and then contract muscle and get a look at it under electron microscopy. And what they noticed initially was that the I band gets smaller when the muscle contracts. So the I band gets smaller. The A band, though, did not get any smaller. This was the beginnings of understanding what's happening here. When a muscle contracts, the Z bands approach each other. The A bands stay the same size, but the I bands shorten. And what this meant, ultimately, is that the myosin and the actin are interacting in such a way that they slide over each other. They slide over each other like this. So the question now is, how exactly did they do that? And we'll get into this when we talk about the um, sliding filament theory. But here's the basic gist of it. Myosin has these little myosin heads on them, also known as myosin cross bridges, that literally come out and attach to the, that are capable of attaching to the actin and moving along the actin, literally crawling along the actin. And that's how it basically works. But now that you see this basic anatomy on the molecular level, we'll be able to really start getting into the physiology. Um, the next video is going to cover excitation, contraction, coupling, and then we'll get into these guys and start to understand the sliding filament theory. As always, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to contact me, email or phone. And thanks again for watching.